This is why Satan offers up, he offers you um, this worldly kingdom for your soul. This is why the Bible says, what is there profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? So yeah, a lot of celebrities, a lot of artists, they sell their soul to Satan for the things of this world. A lot of congressmen, you know, they sell their soul for positions in the White House and stuff. Uh, a lot of people are just selling out to Satan. I'll be honest, people, a lot of people on billboards you see out here, they sold out to Satan. They just sold out. That's just the reality. They sold out. They said they'd rather take their uh, quick years of money and hustling and they'd rather go to hell. God bless you. God bless you. And it's horrible, people. It's horrible. Because all this stuff can't even make you happy anyway. All the, all the money and stuff can't, make, can't satisfy you. These people, they're acting. They're, they're actors. These celebrities, they're actors. They're acting like this stuff is all this and that. But really, these people, they, they feed off your validation. You know, these, these, these celebrities, they need you to cheer for them to make themselves feel good about themselves. So it's like these celebrities, they need you more than you need them. To be honest, they need you more than they need them. They just feed off you. you. You pay for their shows. You, you pay for their concerts. You pay for their nice houses. It's you giving them that stuff because you want to be like them. Since you want to be like them so much, you honor them, and you give them all. You give them all your money, all your attention, all your energy. And and these the and these demonic celebrities they feed off you. So you need to stop worshiping people and start worshiping God. Stop worshiping celebrities and, and worship God, because these celebrities they don't care about you, people. They they really don't care about you. They they really really don't. These celebrities they only care about themselves. They care about their own personal gain. And it's sad. You see you see this young generation perishing because they care more about their favorite artists than they care about their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, this generation is so twisted in the mind, it's, it's very heartbreaking to see that people don't understand that God so loved the world that he's given the living God his son. So those who believe in him would not perish, but they have eternal life. And this generation ignores that, and they rather chase a temporary life of pleasure that leads to death. They t they're, chasing, they're chasing fame, but it's vanity, and it profits nothing. All the things in this world you can gain, but in the end, it leads to nothing. Absolutely zero. This is how Satan is deceiving the masses. Satan is a master deceiver. So to come out of the deception, you have, you have to really surrender your life to Christ. You have to really get in the Word of God. You have to read the Word of God. It's not about just going to church. If you don't read the word of God daily, your mind's gonna be corrupted in this world because this, this world is always pushing the things opposite of God. This world is always pushing all types of subliminal programming and all types of demonic programming. If you don't, if you don't have the helmet of salvation on, your mind is gonna be corrupted in the things of this world. You're, you're gonna, your mind's gonna be corrupted by the government the laws, if you don't have your mind in the word of God, because guess what? The word of God never changes. But laws, nations, they change all the time. But God never changes. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is perfect. God doesn't need to change. He doesn't need to change. But we human beings, we change. We change for our own selfish desires. We change to make ourselves feel good. We change for a lot of different reasons. But God, God never changes. That means God's law never changes. You know, if God says murder is wrong, that means murder is wrong. If, if, if God says adultery is wrong, that means adultery is wrong. God's not going to change it for America, for American culture because America is like, well, I think we should all just, you know, have sex with each other's wives and stuff. Well, I mean, America might say that's okay, but God is still going to say that's wrong. God's not going to change for your culture. God's not going to change for your, for your friend group. God's not going to change for your tribe. God never changes, people. He's not going to change for you. You need to change for God. But a lot of people, you don't want to change for God, and that's why you change God. You, you make your own God in your head. And you say stuff like, well, my God will never judge me, or my God will never say this and that. Yeah, because your God is you. You're your own God. That's what you're talking about. You don't, because you don't want... <laughs> yeah, amen. God bless you. God bless you guys. Yeah, it's because you want to you live in sin. That's why you make, you make your own God. That's why you reject Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the truth. And you don't want the truth in life. You, you want to be lied to. But Christ is not going to lie to you. And many people, you, you can't handle the truth. 
You don't like the light. You like the darkness. Because when you come to when you come to Christ, Christ is pure light. Jesus Christ will shine a light on your darkness. And either you're gonna change or you're gonna run away from it. And many people run away from Christ because they want to live in their darkness. They love their darkness. They love their dark evil deeds. They love the power. You know, they, they love the fame. They love the money. They love it all. But Christ is going to destroy you. Jesus Christ is going to take vengeance upon you for all your evil. How you doing, sir? God bless you. All your evil in your, in your life you didn't repent from. Jesus Christ is going to, he's going to judge you for it. So you're not getting away with your evilness. All your porn, your child porn, all, all the stuff you do in secret, you think no one sees you? No, God sees you. God sees you, and God's keeping track. God's keeping track. There's no rest in peace for the wicked. I Many people, when people die, they say, oh, R.I.P., R.I.P. There's no rest in peace for the wicked. There's no rest in peace. Amen. You're going you're, you're gonna to be translated into your torment if you die wicked. You're going straight to torment when you die in your sin. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked in Isaiah 48, 22. There's only peace for the righteous. There's only peace for the saints of God. People who live in holiness and righteousness here on earth. Those are the people who rest in peace. But, but you can't be out here, out here all twerking online and living in sin and think you're going to die and rest in peace. You're not going to rest, you're not going to rest in peace nowhere. You're going to be judged by God for your wickedness. It causes other people to sin. Because your sin has consequences. You got to come out of your sin, people. You got to come out of your sin. God bless you guys. You got to come out of your sin and humble yourself before it's too late. The Bible says God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So when you come to Christ, you got to humble yourself and confess your sins. You got to confess your sins to Christ. You can't hide your sin from Christ. God already knows your sin. God, God already knows what you're doing wrong. But you need to confess it to him. You got to confess it. Because many people, you have a lot of stored up trauma. You got a question? Yeah. How you confess? So you, you talk to Jesus. You come to him. So you say, hey, Jesus, I'm a sinner. God, I struggle with whatever you struggle with. I don't know what you struggle with personally. But anything, do you, um, do you know what sin is? Do you know what, what, what is sin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Jesus Christ, I, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I need your grace. I need your love. I need you to show me the way. How can I do that? I know I'm doing okay, right now. Okay. How can you do that? How can I do that, sir? So did you, you can do that anywhere. You can do it here with me. You can do it when you get home. You want to do it now? You want to do it now? Want me to help you? I want to, but I don't know how to do it. Okay. Well, it's pretty much. It's not. It's not a script. You know. It's not. It's not anything laid out. It, you, you bore, you, 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 um, you confess your heart to Christ. You're talking to God for yourself. Because you, when you come to the Lord, you can be honest with Him. You can, you can confess yourself to Him. So there's no right way, there's no how, wrong way. How can I do it? Um, by just repenting. Saying like, say, God forgive me for my sin. How can I repent? Say, God, I repent. God, I repent for all my sins. How, in what way? In the way that you be led to. You gotta be led by it, man. Just be, just be led. I know I believe in him. A way I'd be out there. Uh -huh. But I know that I sin so many times. I do not know how to. Uh huh. So you will just um. I can do. You want me to, do you wanna, want me to lead you to a prayer? Please do. Yeah. I don't know how to do it, but please show me the way. Okay. What's your name? Nestor. Was it? N E S T O R. Nestler? Nestler? Yes. Okay. Okay, just repeat that to me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In your name.